Okay. Um, let's do Q&A. Y'all ready? Ready for some answers and questions? I'll be reading these from the Discord. Link will be in the description, I believe. When someone check me on that. I don't want to spread misinformation, you know what I mean? Okay, this is, uh, is Tabception. Here we go. Questions for the next episode. We'll start here. This is going to screw up my placement, but I want to respect the place of the current questions. So anyone, Princess Drone Strike, I'll let you get one. All right, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, now, you know what? Let's post this in a little bit. If you guys want to ask some questions, you can ask some questions. All right, so get ready for a majority style intro. Hey, everybody. Welcome to majority Q&A for the month of July 2022. I'm looking forward to answering some gaming-related questions and some non-gaming-related questions here on the YouTube from my Discord. You're sworn brothers. I should probably add sisters and siblings. Maybe let's think about a name change. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to get into it. If you enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. It means the world to me, and you can also ask great questions and follow up with follow up with the other Q and As and stuff. And yeah, just it's good times. It's good vibes all around. The first question comes from fuck the gaming industry, Terry 309. Indeed, I know you're not a fan. What is the most underappreciated video game soundtrack? So I've got a clip for you if you're watching the live stream. I'm just going to tease it here and I'll post it probably sometime next week. It's coming from my Spaceship Shooter review that I'm hoping to post on Tuesday. I've been sticking with the Tuesday uploads. It's been working pretty well for me, so I want to keep that going. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, soundtrack here, but I will mention Tokyo Beatdown on the Nintendo DS has like a super jazzy, stylish kind of DS OST. I love it. Like it's and it's on my playlist. It's even on my playlist of individual songs. They only have the full album. Somebody should probably clip it. But you know, there's parts of the album I don't like. But in general, it's just got that kind of like bass sound. Boom, 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 boom. I don't know. I'm feeling it. It's just got that kind of like. Um, I don't know, 80s cop movie sound like vibe. I don't, I don't know. And it's set in Tokyo. It's really cool. I'm into it. I'm, I'm a fan of Tokyo Beatdown. Check it out. Grand Papo, Alex of Turbo Zone, follows up with, what is the most overappreciated video game soundtrack? That's hard. Because how many people actually really appreciate video game music? I don't know. Like, I mean, are there any like super commercial video game soundtracks that like people gas up i don't i don't know i don't think of too many the best answer i have for this is halo you know i think everybody like kind of gushes over the main halo theme but i don't think that's enough to warrant that it's like one of the best soundtracks ever it's seriously just a very monotonous tone and kind of the same theme and after a while it gets a little old how does it go even it's like um now i've got tokyo beat down in my head um halo Bum ba ba bum ba ba bum ba ba bum na na da 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 da. It's not a bad song. It's you know it energizes you in the moment. And all credit to the game. I like the game, but you know soundtrack wise, meh, could be better. Thanks for the questions, guys. You really did a bang up job. Love it. Bio Phoenix, what's up, man? What's your favorite ending credits theme? Ending credits. Hmm. I guess, I, I don't know if I call this a favor. It's just the one I was thinking about prior to this. Chrono Cross has a very, like, memeable ending credits. So, I, I don't, it's kind of like, a, maybe Spencer can help explain this one. But it's, like, totally not fitting with the vibe or theme of the game. You get, like, real-life pictures of, like, the in-game characters. It doesn't make sense. It's weird. And then, supposedly, like, Kid is, like, demonstrated in the end through, like, this blonde girl in the city. It's very weird. The song is no better. <laughs> so it's kind of, there's some irony there. I kind of like it. And it's very weird if you don't get the true ending too, because like, that's all you get. So I don't know. Favorite company logo design. I don't have a great answer for this. I do like the N64 logo. And then I always mention the Chunsoft Half Avocado. Priceless. Terry309, what game series is the most consistent in quality? Hmm. Okay, we may not agree here, or we may agree here. It's, I think, actually, you know what? I'll just pick an answer for you, Terry. It's got to be Dynasty Warriors, right? Because there's so many of them, and they kind of are always 
the same similar formula. I think that's actually important is that you kind of like replicate success within a series if you've achieved success. And apparently it's working for them. So by all means, I'll throw that one to Dynasty Warriors. Not exactly for me, but in terms of consistency, I recognize it. Most memorable video game quote. You know, I was looking up some stuff on localization and bad localizations. There are some really bad localizations. Uh, and so I guess just the stand-up one that everyone remembers is from that Genesis game. I think it was Zero Wing. Maybe I'm wrong there. But uh, it's like all your bases belong to us. It's just such a bad translation, but I kind of love it. Why is Nintendo overrated? Well, I believe that, so I can answer that. I think that Nintendo has like a safeguard of like fun and beyond criticism when you think about them. And so you're not allowed to be critical of any of their systems because they're doing what the other companies aren't. You know, they're making the fun games for everybody. And I think that there's a harsh reality too of the fact that Nintendo will always be for the younger demographics. And because the Nintendo of now is still for the younger demographics, it means they don't have access to the same games that we experienced growing up and you know us older folk i guess and so they won't compare freaking zelda breath of the wild bad example i guess to like twilight princess and they won't see like the narrative lore and everybody's just going to kind of get behind whatever the like the the hype train is and then you have the, the internet culture that's just like you're wrong if you don't agree and so like all of these things combine to create this like fortress of nintendo that is impenetrable and there are modern nintendo games i like and there are modern nintendo games i think are kind of weak i actually saw a recent video i can't remember the channel name alex recommended them to me there's like kind of like a not a hate channel but it's like what the levels i hate from freaking dk64 sorry multimaster but like he had a good video on um has Nintendo gotten lazy? I'll actually link it in the Discord after the stream sometime today or tomorrow. I like the question. Why does Nintendo suck so badly? <laughs> By the way, I'm not looking at chat. Uh, I'll look at chat when the q and on. Why does Nintendo suck so badly? I don't know if they do. <laughs> do they? Does Nintendo suck so badly? I don't know if I'd say they're worse than Sony right now, but then again, I like, I kind of like playing on my PS4. All the spaceship shooters I have played have been on my PS4 this whole time. Even the fifth one that I'm doing, they've all been PS4. So I like that actually, you know what? Nintendo is behind the times when it comes to even things like streaming. And so like, that's kind of annoying. I wish that they were more ahead. They still got the 30 second clip thing going. Uh, the being connected to the internet to play your SNES games is stupid. I don't, I just don't like that because like I was just somewhere without Wi-Fi, and you know, luckily I'm a New Yorker. I mean, I'm always going to be around Wi-Fi, but like, you know, if I go on vacation, that's not necessarily the case. And it just seeing as the switch is a freaking portable console. Yeah. There's some backwards philosophy there. Um, actually don't like the switch is okay. I'm, I'm okay with the switch, but I, I have, I have issues with it. Um, yeah, it's expensive. It's over overpriced. Why is Nintendo so stupid? I mean, see the above. I, I don't have much more to add there. Why did Microsoft ruin gaming? Well, I will say they ruined Rareware, more or less, by being super controlling. I actually really liked on the button mappers doing that episode about the history of Rareware. It was really interesting to read up on the Microsoft uh, legacy in the Rareware era. So... I think the fact that they were up and coming in the early 2000s in the gaming industry, but they were using the assets from Windows and, you know, all of the money behind that. I actually want to read more about Bill Gates. I think that would be super fascinating. Uh, so I think that money poisoned the well when you think about Microsoft and gaming. It doesn't mean there were bad Microsoft games. There were good ones. Sega really flourished on the Xbox. But... You know, I mean, they pioneered, in your words, like, you know, like the streaming services and, you know, the monthly subscriptions and all of that. So, yeah, commercial gaming. <laughs> gotta love it. Gotta hate it. Something somewhere in between. Why is Sony so bad? <laughs> because it rhymes with pony. What are the worst fanboys? I don't want to piss anyone off here. Uh, for me? Ah, damn, it's, I hate to do this. Uh, I can't, I can't criticize Breath of the Wild without somebody like just poking me for it. Like, it's just, I'm not into that. I, I kind of, 
I hate that um that that gatekeeping of opinions, especially for series that I love. It doesn't make sense. So yeah, there's that. All right, why do we need consoles in 2022 when PC is better in every single way now? Um, not an opinion I agree with. A PC has never worked for me. I just don't have a great setup for it, and I'm not going to hook it up to my TV. So I, I, I don't agree. Um, why do we need consoles, though? I think it's for people like me, people who like kind of that easier access gaming, the collection aspect. And then I think it's just like if you want to play with people, you know, across the globe who are not as tech savvy, like I think it's just better for them. Like it's and I, I would include myself in that camp. I was reading on Reddit somebody like, you know, t giving like PC spec recommendations and stuff. And I just didn't understand like the language is, is almost beyond me. I just don't have the language for it. I could learn it. I could learn more about it. But my interest and, in, you know, desire to is kind of low. When am I going to play the best game ever made? What is that, Terry? You have to put best game ever made and then colon, and then tell me what the game is in the chat. Is Princess, Princess Peach a meth addict? Why would you say that? Maybe that's what made Super Princess Peach? <laughs> Anyways, if not, what would she look like if she was? I don't... Oh, baggy eyes? Uh, ragged clothes, maybe? Under, under a bridge? Is, instead of in the castle? Okay. Uh, is Mario a pineapple? No. Is Luigi and onion? Yes. Is Bowser a lemon? Maybe. Is Goomba a fungus? Close. Is Pikachu a fish? Can't help you there. Is Bellsprout? Chips. Maybe in Britain. Is Metal Gear Solid overrated? I've only played the first one, but technically your question would count as if it was the first Metal Gear Solid. I will say no. I feel like people talk more about 2 and 3, which I have no opinion on because I haven't played them. I would like to play them. The first game was okay. I'm glad I played it, but since having mapped it out last year, I remember almost nothing about it, uh, aside from just, you know, the exclamation point that comes over your head every time you take a box off. Yeah. What noodles are the best? That's Bio Phoenix. Okay, the type or like the brand? That's tricky. You know I like my udon. I, I really like udon. And, and I don't think of the udon brand. It's just in the frozen section and the packaging is transparent. So I would probably go udon noodles. I think it's just like there's no... Like with ramen, you're getting like the MSG packs and stuff. Like udon, you don't really get that. You just make your sauce whatever way you want. So like you could add MSG if you want, you know, but you don't have to. Do I enjoy pot? No. I enjoy pan. Do you enjoy noodles? Yes, I do enjoy noodles. Do I wish that noodles and pot combined together so you eat the noodle pot? Pot noodle? Noodles cooked out of pot? Yeah. Spencer is a cannibal and eats Alex alive. He's coming after me next. What do I do? Whoa, we're getting another one of these create your own questions. Uh, he's coming after me from Arizona. That gives me time to escape. I will go off the grid, turn Wi-Fi off. Uh, maybe escape from New York, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, good close landmarks. I don't want to, like, go overseas necessarily, although I could probably make a life for myself teaching English. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, i probably just go back to the Caribbean. Uh, is Geodude Hulk Hogan's brother's brother... Probably. Have you ever donated money to a beggar on the streets of New York? Yeah, it happens every so often. Um, I tend not to um, simply because you don't know what is the money going towards. But sometimes it's like, I mean, the person needs bus fare. I don't It's just and you can't necessarily trust the stranger. I think you just have to trust that like your money, you know, that's where you wanted your money to go that it was your good deed, that you felt good doing it. You could always ask if you're up for the conversation. Like, um, asking what do you need it for isn't necessarily as helpful as, like, can I get you food instead or something? And then, like, you'll actually kind of read into the person. Um, it's not as common now. Maybe if I'm going through Manhattan, I see it a lot more. Maybe through Brooklyn. But uh, I, I don't see a lot of um, beggars on a day-to-day -day basis. But it happens. I mean, I drive, so like, you know, there's that. Favorite curry. Oh, that's good. Eggplant. Eggplant curry, right? Is that what I'm thinking of? It's kind of like a tofu veggie curry with like those eggplants. Like, oh man, the 
I can't cook. I've never tried cooking eggplant, or if I have, I failed. But when you get a good boiled eggplant, that's good. That's good. Uh, Miguel von Strangler, Malta Master. These questions are something different, 100%. But I'm having fun. Thoughts on Atari, NES, Sega Master System, and PC-98. Atari. Alex sent me an Atari with all love and respect. Not for me. <laughs> I will play the collections, though. I'll play Asteroids. Um, I'll play a couple cartridges. But I just, it's, you know what it is? It's the hookup to the CRT mandatory. I don't know. Maybe if I got a Retron, I'd enjoy them different. NES, not my favorite era. I think that the controls have not aged well for most NES games. Sega Master System, I've never owned, but I've played games from the Sega Master System era. Yeah. So I, I guess I like them. Not, it's no Genesis, though. What is a PC-90? I don't know. Like playing Windows and Minesweeper? Yeah, I'm into that. Do I have any Yu-Gi-Oh! memories? You know what? I'm realizing that my chat is on the side of the screen. That does not make sense where I'm looking. I think this is better. Okay. Do I have Yu-Gi-Oh! memories? Yeah, I used to go play competitively in like a small area with my uh, deck. My best card was Jinzo and Scapegoat. Those were a lot of, uh, they were strategic uses. I don't know. Jinzo destroys the trap cards and Scapegoat puts like four tokens on the field as a buffer. Um, so anytime I drew them, then that would be good. You used to be able to win a pack if you beat everybody there. And I, I remember winning a couple of times. Is there any Wii U game left that you want to play but are still stuck on the Wii U? Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. I have it. It's just setting up the Wii U is not a great time. Um, Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, I, I want to play through those as well. I want to download those before I get it, uh, before the service cans out, you know? Um, and then I've already downloaded Wind Waker, but I have to download Twilight Princess. You know what? They screwed me, though. It's 60 bucks, and I had $60 worth of voucher and like plus a little bit of change from the last time I spent money, but they still charge you tax, and you can't add money unless you have the Nintendo uh, eShop cards. So I was left with like 62 14 and it cost 62.54 or something stupid. And so I didn't get to download Twilight Princess, the game that I mostly wanted. Well, I still got like 20 bucks left over from recent purchases, so I'll probably just get another $40 card or something. See if I can do it. Whew, it's hot. Okay. Who's the best wizard? Harry. You know why? Cuz anytime you see me, you'd be like, "You're a wizard, Harry." I can't just say that about anyone. Terry, you're a wizard, Terry. <laughs> I am a wizard. What spell should I use to save the world from columns? D block. Not D block from Eminem. <laughs> D block, like remove blocks. Uh, is this a band name, Malta? Black Spell of Death, song name? I don't know. Alex is a wizard. What spell should he cast to transform Spencer into Toad? Toadette. Spencer is not a wizard. How do I feel about this? Probably better, knowing he can't cast the spell on me. Okay. Repeat. Black spell of death. Who has the strongest gas, Kirby, Wario, or SNES Mapper? Is it an insult if I say SNES Mapper? That's probably a compliment to him, right? But I'm not just going to say it because it's a compliment. Strongest gas objectively is Wario. Why would Kirby have strong gas? Because he's a star? And stars are gashes? I don't know. Uh, Wario. Why is Devil May Cry 2 Alex's favorite game? I can't answer that. What shovelware games do I recommend? None. Should gaming... Okay, PXN Gaming, let's go. Should gaming be a part of a school curriculum? Like an actual class, period playing, discussing games. And there's a follow-up. We'll come back to that. I have first-hand experience here, not because I teach it, but because I see it. I see uh, game design being taught in classes, and I see robotics taught as a class. Video game design, the kids use like Scratch and other coding uh, programs to build their own games. I've seen one teacher that let the kids pretty much play on Minecraft uh, for the whole time. I think it's hit or miss. I think 
I'd say there's like a split of like how many kids actually like it. I think there's like a thing of like, yeah, let's just give the kids video games and it'll fix everything. Not exactly. You, you know, like just having a curriculum doesn't necessarily or just having like the thing that you say kids will like doesn't mean they will like it. It has to be taught meaningfully and demonstrated meaningfully. You still need the pedagogy. You need to teach in a way where it'll be like fun and engaging. You want to engage the kids in the concept. Like if you could have them show off their game on the big screen and challenge you, can beat it, do typing tests and things like that. You know, sometimes I just do it for fun with the kids. If it's like a nice like mental uh, break for them. Also, some teachers freak out over this, but like seeing a kid playing like freaking snake on the computer, you know, uh, or something else. I, you know, I mean, there's laptops in every class um, nowadays in most schools. So to me, it's just like, all right, well, just close the software. I'm not going to make you put your computer back and then give you a paper copy. It's actually more work for me. And plus, I think sometimes a kid needs it. If they, But the thing is, they'll use it as an excuse. Like, oh, I already finished my work. Well, did you look over it? Is it the best? Like, did you look at the rubric? How well are you like scoring according to this? So there are ways that kids can use their time better. But to me, if a kid plays a, a game on the desktop, that's different than having their phone out and like doing something like God knows what on the phone. You could technically say they could be doing anything on the computer too. So like it's, it, this is, there's a, a triple edged sword here. There's like, a, it's a cube sword. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think if done correctly and meaningfully and you know, it can, it can be good. I, I think it can be good. Uh, already is, but it's an esports, which probably causes more damage to mental health than anything given that community. As curriculum, really? In South Korea, it's compulsory to study StarCraft. Oh, wow. I'd like to learn more about that. I know. Can you even play StarCraft anymore? I know Warcraft was taken down. You learn micromanagement, which isn't fun. Yeah, that's the thing is like kids, like, I don't know, if you're like shoehorning in something like to something they love, like they're going to hate it. Like it's, it's, it's a, it's a mixed bag. I don't know. As an educator, I disagree with the statement um, because having a concept for what you're going to teach is really important. For instance, like as, well, I don't know how much I want to get into this, but like if my concept for my unit in the humanities is like empathy, then I can organize the content that I teach around that. We can kind of build towards that. So I don't know if I'm just doing whatever, then like the years, whatever. And then like, so the, the content is not as meaningful. It's kind of like organizing a YouTube channel. You want to organize it around the thing or things that you like. It doesn't always have to be the same either. You can always switch it up, you know? So like the, the thing is that educators get stagnant or like they'll teach somebody else's curriculum. Yeah, that's dumb. That's because that's not yours. You didn't you didn't really co-create that. And sometimes it's lazy. So I think every educator should start by creating their own curriculum. Like, I think that's super important. I learned that way. Not, I don't know if I want to impose it on people, but like that's that's what worked for me. Like, I guess just speaking from personal experience. Let people learn what they want. I mean, that's what post school is for. That's what like the, the college level is for. You can kind of find your own way. But hopefully, I guess the ideal is that like all the, the grades going up to it have allowed you to um, figure out what it is that you want to pursue. Interesting, those games tend to be way too stressful. I was referring to more kid-friendly games like the Marios of the world. You know, I think sometimes you should just let the fun be fun. I don't think we need to make a lesson out of it. One of my favorite quotes from Isaac Asimov uh, from his essays on the science fiction genre was that he hated when teachers would try and teach his uh, books in school because he said they never really like taught what it is he wanted or anticipated and things like that. He said his books should just be enjoyed. And so I feel it's kind of like, I don't feel like his principle should apply to everything or every game, but I think it generally works as a rule. Hey everyone, question, do you think arcades are dead or are they just not as popular as before? Um, it's hard for me to say as popular as before because I, I don't know if i ever really experienced the arcade era or have been to like the biggest arcade they still exist and they're thriving there is an underground scene in new york i know of a couple i've been to but i don't know if i've ever seen them huge it's definitely not what it was but i feel like gaming has been more accepted as a medium yeah not as popular as before pxn coming in with the uh the insider scoops arcades were really popular in the 80s and 90s but there's still a market for them yeah there is i agree 
SNES Mapper, when was the last time you played an arcade machine? Barcade on my birthday. Uh, will Terry finally calm down now that a new Valkyrie profile game was announced? So I disagree with the framing of this question because I think that um, people miss... Uh, how am I going to say this? It's not categorize. They mischaracterize Terry. It's like angry all the time. No, I think he actually believes what he says. Um, actually, if you watch his recent video on the new Valkyrie profile game, he doesn't start by shouting and screaming. He just says, we need to talk. So like, it's, I don't, I don't necessarily agree that he's angry. Now, his feelings about that game are entirely valid as a Valkyrie profile fan. I understand that as a Zelda fan talking about Breath of the Wild, you know, um, I'll let Terry speak for Terry on his opinions on the game, but no, I, I will come to his defense in that one and just say that, um, I think people should probably take him more serious. Like that's, that's how I feel. Okay. Would I trust Yuji Naka? I'm looking at the chat. I probably shouldn't. Uh, with working on an established Nintendo franchise, Yuji Naka, what did he do? He did um, Sonic? Space? Outrun? D oh, he did Balan. He did Balan Wonderworld, the, the shit fiasco. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yuji Naka should take a little, uh, little respite for a bit. Although, I don't think that's entirely his fault. Okay, what outdoor activities do I plan for the rest of the summer? So I mentioned this earlier on the stream, but I've started a personal fitness training journey. Yeah, go me. Um, I just want to get in shape. So I think like going to the gym and doing at-home workouts will be important. I And you know what? It's really hot and it's really gross out here, but I think doing the morning walks and the evening walks is helpful. I don't want to overexert myself, though. Making sure to drink plenty of water. I haven't barely even touched my coffee. What's my favorite Kirby moment? The 100% end boss for Kirby 64. I won't spoil it. I'll just say that's my favorite moment. Terry can attest to that. New Valkyrie profile game where? Well, there's your answer. Is it a deal breaker if a game doesn't have a silent protagonist for you? No, it's not a deal breaker. Captain Falcon has the voice in F-Zero GX, so like, I don't know. Star Fox 64, that's huge. You know, I like the voice acting from Fox. I think it adds life to it. I can appreciate both. You know, I, I appreciate silent protagonists when done right and not generically. And then I um, also like voice acting or dialogue when it's done in a meaningful and um i don't know a significant way i don't know yeah what makes a silent protagonist so much more desirable for me than a speaking one i've always looked at the silent protagonist as me in the game like I, that's just how i feel when i play it i can't i can't express like what that's like but seeing through their lens, you know, I talk about this sometimes when I play like Ocarina of Time on the N64 and I'll literally just press the C up button because that way I can like just kind of look around and I feel like I'm taken in Kokiri Forest as myself. The dialogue is my options. I can hear what people say and I can say, well, what the hell are you talking about? Or like, you know, like I can, I can create the dialogue and the conversation. So I think that element of attachment is significant to me and, and so... I don't know if it's always more desirable. I mean, like it's, it begins to jut out in something like persona where they're like, and that's great. How about you? You know, like at that point you're kind of just maybe breaking the medium, you know? Um, but when it's done in a non-invasive manner, I do really like silent protagonists. How do I put myself in the shoes of a protagonist that you can't even create yourself? Well, I just pretend I'm that person. Like, I mean, you know, people use anonymous handles all the time, you know? So like, I mean, I just kind of internalize it. I just envision it. The same way you read a book and you kind of just see what the character's going through and stuff. It's just like a line between empathy and like internalizing, like somewhat of both. 
If me, Spencer, and Alex were red and blue starters from Pokemon, which ones would you be? I'm red. I'm red. You know, I, this was hard because, like, I think I liked Squirtle growing up, but I was always a Charmander guy. I just, you know, something about the Charizard in the anime, he's, like, kind of just a grumbling, like, tough guy, and, like, you know, he's a dragon, and I like dragons, so, like, Blastoise is cool, Squirtle, I mean, the Squirtle Squad, Squirtle, you know, like, that's cool, but, like, Charizard takes the freaking cake, and the fact that Charmander turns into him, like, that's big for me. Uh, I like the monochromatic look of red as opposed to blue. Red has always been a more preferred color to me. I don't, I'm not big on the blue, um, but red is my style. Yeah. Hopefully I picked right, Spencer. <laughs> I, I'm, I can't answer this on stream, I'm sorry. What is the best uh, Zelda game that comes from Princess Drone Strike? Ocarina of Time. To me. To me. Some are better in different regards, but I just, you know what, I think it was pivotal at its time. I think it's held up really well. There's a reason it was remastered on 3DS. It's one of the best 3DS games. I like Majora's Mask a lot, don't get me wrong. There's something eternal about, like, Ocarina of Time. And not Eternal Quest. Just, like, the legacy is, like, it just will forever be, like, the big 3D game for me. Like, I don't know. I, I can't explain it. Because, you know, you could argue it's the opposite, but, you know, it's fine. What is the most overrated Shin Megami Tensei game besides, obviously, Persona? Persona 1? Really? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to rule out Persona for a minute. So, SMT 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. It's probably 5. It's probably 5. I think that, for the most part, people... It's a modern game. And I think people play it, like, once, and they're like, yeah, it's good. But I think, too, like, the previous two games were better. Yeah. No, no. They're all great, though. So, there's nothing wrong with being overrated. Do I play PC games? If so, what is my favorite one, and what is my rank? Uh, my PC gaming experience was only when I could play on my dad's desktop because he had a better setup. Like, this is okay, but, like, my back starts to hurt. I used to play Roller Coaster Tycoon. I was big on that, kind of like that self-creation aspect and, like, managing roller coasters and amusement parks. I was... I had this 3D Frogger game that was actually good. I know there's a bad 3D Frogger game. And I got into Warcraft 3. It was a really good game. What is my rank? My Steam rank is terrible. It's terrible. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is that Trey, my friend from Hawaii? Hey, bud. Nice to see you. Seems like you and Chloe are doing well, so happy to see you, you know, living it up. How old does a game have to be for it to be considered retro? Ooh, spicy. Spicy, I like this. Let's just think aloud for a second. So if it's retro, it's vintage, right? And I think that, oh my God, there's a fucking deer in my backyard. Do you want me to pick up the fucking camera? This is crazy. Yo. I'm going to screw up my whole microphone setting up. Do you see it? Do you see the fucking deer, bro? Dude, we got real life Stantler. Holy shit. Wow. Hopefully I didn't just screw up my goddamn stream. Okay. All right, it's my parents' backyard, it's not mine. Um, damn it. Damn, we ruined Trey's question. All right, or we blessed it. Maybe the deer really likes Trey's question. I think that's what's happening here. Guys, Trey was one of the first people I met in Hawaii. How about that? <laughs> Reliving decades long experience super cool in the modern era okay i consider retro like the n64 playstation one even though it's 3d gaming i still think that like it was kind of for its time i don't think games have changed that much since the gamecube ps2 
360 era other than in terms of graphical fidelity. People can disagree. They can uh, see it differently, but that's how I see it. People might see it like older. You might say Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. But I think like Saturn, you know, Saturn is pretty retro. It's pretty vintage. Dreamcast, I would still consider retro because like the Xbox kind of pushed the boundary a little bit with Shenmue being kind of the uh, barrier pusher alongside like Ocarina of Time. Did I know that Cubone is a Charmander whose tail didn't get lit because his mom died and now he wears her skull? I need a fact check on this. This is cute. I did like Cubone growing up. That was a cute one. Does content creation get in the way of recreational gaming? Great question, Terry. And it's one that I revisit frequently because I wonder sometimes, like, am I playing this to review the game? Or am I playing this because I genuinely want to? And I think that when you find the nice balance, you can do both. It's just that the same thing is not going to work for everyone. So, for instance, like, I just want to do spaceship shooters right now. And so I'm playing them and enjoying them and loving them. And I'm bringing new life to them through the content creation. If you overdo it, then yeah, it definitely starts to feel burdensome. But like I can play other games and just like not talk about them on my channel. I can talk about them on the button mappers, you know? And then like it's just like a segment. So I don't know. The button mappers is my podcast channel. And we're doing great. We had a fucking killer episode with Donkey Kong Country 3. I just want to say that. So thanks for watching the Q&A. The stream is not done. But questions for the next episode will start here.